Okay, this is Jared Victor Kilo 3 Bravo Lima. You can hear in the background there we've got um, a couple of park stations working each other. And the purpose of this, uh, this video is really just to show you, um, give you a, a demonstration of how the Digi Select, you know, how, I guess, how high Q it sort of really is. Um, and if you think about the, the IC7610's display scope, um, with each each reference being 10 decibels, um, you can get sort of a feel for it. So, at the moment, I'm tuned into the middle of the seven meter, uh, 40 meter band, uh, seven megahertz, and we'll scroll back and forward. So I'm taking it right down to the start of the band, and there's always a bit of a clicking here. It sounds like an antenna tuner, but it's not. It's a pre selector. Um, there you go, we're at the start of the band now, and you can see the whole top of the band, just 300 kilohertz off, has sort of dropped off by about, I don't know, let's call it 20 decibels or so, um, which is quite an achievement really, if you think about it, that's only three, 300 um, kilohertz up, so it's not a whole lot. Um, but yeah, if we go into a scan now at a steady rate, I'm not sure whether you can hear the clicking or not, but it's definitely there. Um, we'll just watch, and I might actually have to do it a bit faster on the next one. So you can sort of see the colour gradient. Hopefully you're seeing it, I'm not sure. We'll find out in a sec. Okay, so there we go. You can see now up, up at this side, you, you know, we're about flat, and over here about, I don't know, 25 to 30 dB over. But let's do that quickly. So you should be able to see the way the the tracking preselector, well, the, sorry, the preselector, um, basically tracks the VFO knob, and um, yeah, it does its job just seamlessly in the background. Now the ultimate demonstration: go into the menu, turn Digi Select off. Boom! You can see right there when it's been turned off. So <clears throat> I think there's a bit of value in Digi Select. <clears throat> I think it would be useful in um, high noise environments. The real question is whether having all those relays clicking away all the time, um, you know, is it gonna shorten the life of your rig? Um, now, we're, we're lucky we've got a five year warranty here, and I think, you know, even at the, this price point with five years, um, you know, uh, if you're spending, I don't know, 800 US a year on a rig or something, um, and you've got five guaranteed years out of it, and it's cutting edge, well, you're still getting pretty good value for your money. Um, uh, you know, even if it does die on the sixth year. So I, th I think that's that, that's sort of all right. But, um, you know, if you're planning to hold on to it for 10 years, well, you might want to look at the relay um, specifications and see how many, you know, clicks they're rated for. Because, well, how, how many clicks, how many um, cycles they're rated for. Because as you can hear, just going through one band, um, you know, to preserve the high Q nature of it, um, you know, results in quite a few relay changes constantly. Um, and it's worth noting there is two individual Digi Select units, so um, you know it might be entirely plausible that in the future we see these with the main band Digi Select worn out and the sub band not. I don't know. Um, the units are discrete, so they're on separate PCBs. So if they do wear out, I dare say at a board level would be an easy replacement anyway. Um, as you can see, it doesn't roll off the high signals completely. They're still there on the band. Um, but, and there we've got our friend Jim, VK2QA, having a chat. So, yeah, anyway, the, um, the only other thing I guess worth mentioning is, and hopefully you can see it, um, when Digislix turned on, you can't use a power amp. Now I dare say that's because I've used the power amp circuits to compensate for the loss in the DigiSelect um, circuitry, um, and it's probably dynamic too. Um, so I can understand why that's unavailable, um, but certainly it's one of those little gotchas. Now the other big gotcha I'll, I'll show quickly here is um, the high resolution HDMI display out. Hmm, really guys, let's have a look, where is it? Um, I need to do my menu overview. Um, uh, let's see. If, 
I thought it was in connectors, but maybe it's not display. Let's have a look here. Uh, there you go. External display resolution, page three of three. Oh. There are two options. 800 by 480 and 800 by 600. What they really are is, is it a 16.9 screen or is it a, um, a 4.3 screen? But that's it. Um, that's the native resolution of this little seven inch display. So that means even if you connect up to, well, a beautiful high resolution monitor like the one I've got above, you're limited to the same resolution as a built on display. So, hmm, not really sure that uh, lives up to, uh, well, what they're saying it'll do. Yes, it will, for everyone out there um, wondering, it will give you exactly what you used to get. Um, with the old um, uh, IC7000, for example, where you know you could plug it into an external, I um, oh, forget the name of that connector now, the little uh, um, composite output, um, and you know you'd you'd be able to to blow it up like you wanted, but you wouldn't get any more um, resolution, I suppose. So that's a technical way of saying you wouldn't get any more detail, um, and you're not going to with this screen e either. Um, so that's just one of the things that's worth worth mentioning, I suppose, at this stage is that um, just because it's got HDMI on it doesn't mean it has a um, you know a high definition output resolution. It doesn't. In fact, um, 800 by 480 uh, only qualifies as standard definition. So if you think back to when plasma TVs first hit the scene, um, the display output on this is lower than even the most rudimentary of plasma TVs. So there you go. Anyway, I'll wrap it up, get this video uploaded, and um, hopefully that's been of some interest. I'll follow up with some later ones today, including, just a quick spoiler, the ICOM RC28 extra VFO knob. I don't know if you can see, but that's controlling the subband receiver now. So, yeah, we splashed it out for this thing. Now, I must say, um, for a very expensive rotor encoder, which it is, it does seem very, very well built. It's folded steel. Um, made in Japan, so at least you, at least there's quality there for a very expensive rotor encoder, but nice to have and multi-use. So I think it's it's worthwhile getting if you have a 7610. Anyway, that's enough for now. Um, this is Jared VK3BL, and we'll follow up with um, videos later on. Put in the comments what you want to see videos of. Catch you later.